Oh, hello there. Welcome back to another episode of I Love This, You Should Too, an Alberta Podcast Network podcast where we're locally grown and community supported. I'm Samantha Randawa, and with me is my lovely husband, Indy Randawa. That's me. Lovely husband. <laughs> lovely oh. husband. I was I... just looking at pictures of our wedding, so I'm feeling like all warm and fuzzy. All husbandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's forget all of that romance with the movie we're going to talk about today. <laughs> no romance. <laughs> <laughs> they try. They try. It doesn't work. It's a big flop for me. In case you weren't aware, today we are going to be talking about, is it the fifth? Step up five. Step up five, step up all in, which I only now realized is like a gambling thing because they're in Vegas. Yeah. But they don't gamble in the movie, really. No. And we have gone through all of the step up movies thus far. So if you're a big uh, step up fan out there, go check out all of those. Yeah. In case you haven't seen Step Up All In, you should go watch it because we're going to spoil it. But really, also, you know what? If you haven't seen it, uh, you know, you're probably fine if we just spoil it for you. Probably. So we are going to really get into the movie. Spoilers all the way through. And we'll, I was going to say we're going to dissect and analyze, but I don't know how much analysis we can do on this one. But we're going to try. We're going to talk about it for sure. But before we get into it, let's thank our first sponsor of the show, and that is the Alberta Treasury Branch. At ATB, they make banking work for you. With expert and practical advice in everyday banking and investment planning expertise and management services with ATB Wealth, you can be confident that you're making smart choices when it comes to your money. They have a history of doing what's right for their clients, especially when times are tough because ATB was built to help Albertans. For more information, visit the Alberta Treasury branch at atb.com. Well, Sam, this was your pick. Yes. Because we're going through all of them. And you know what? I'm getting pretty confused as to which step up is where. (laughs) Is it three that was my favorite? I think three is my favorite. Maybe. So we're at five now, step up, all in. Uh What did you think of this one? Um, it was really confusing in the beginning, and then I kind of relaxed into it and liked it towards the end. So you're an overall positive on this one? Overall positive, but I have I have notes. Oh, I have some notes. <laughs> Where would this fit on your ranking of top five step ups? Oh, I'm not even sure. Is it on the top half or the bottom half? Probably bottom half. Okay. Because it like was such an odd movie. Like, the organization of it was very strange. It's not particularly well written. No. But none of them have been. Like, the beginning of the movie seemed like we were already 40 minutes into the movie. And I think that could be good in some respects because a lot of these movies get bogged down in the same stuff. Yeah. I've seen it already. I know. And they tend to skip over a bunch of that. So I was on board. But then about halfway through the movie, they spend way too much time on those manufactured conflicts that they put in all of the movies. And now they're like, what if we put in two or three? Yeah. You know that part that you hate of the dance movie? Let's do more of that. Yeah. Like we don't need as much conflict in this movie as there is. And then also, like, I think we could have spent a little bit more time on the front doing some like introductions <laughs> yeah but we do have a lot of returning characters here i think well pretty much everyone is from one of the other step up yeah movies, right? there's like a few new people but mostly it's... on the uh, villain side all of our main characters we've seen somewhere before yes well should we just get into it let's break it down let's do it let's start off at the beginning because these movies uh we don't have our big thematic analyses like we often do so we're just gonna run through it (laughs) and talk about uh, step up all in it's not really a thematic movie that we well the theme is dancing the theme is dancing it's true so this one starts like a lot of them do with that documentary footage and people talking about the importance of dance and each time i kind of fall for it i'm like okay yeah i'm on board this sounds good it definitely seemed heartfelt and like dance is life and i like what they do in this one because with the very next scene they totally undercut that and they're bringing in this reality of the life of dancers that we don't really get to see in any of the other movies because then it goes to them auditioning for i don't know a movie or commercial or something 
and how poorly they are treated and how all of these dancers just live really hard lives trying yeah. to make it as dancers. Yeah. And we don't get to see that in the other one, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, it was kind of neat and like how ridiculous some auditions can be. I've definitely never auditioned for anything like that, so that was kind of a fun little like montage. After the fun audition montage we find out that they brought their own mariachi costumes yeah there's all these costume changes and the joke is like look at all these crazy things they make yeah. them wear turns out they brought that all from home yeah which is kind of odd they spend a lot of money on their auditions yeah and like production value and only one dancer gets it and he is going to be the villain for the rest of this movie but he's not really that bad of a guy no he seems okay like he's not malicious or like rude after the villains of the last movies who are attacking people in the streets beating them up uh buying their homes and like, <laughs> yeah tearing down their neighborhoods this guy kind of rubs it in when he wins that's about it yeah he's he's like oh we're the better dance crew haha -ha. yeah and like yeah they were yeah true <laughs> and he booked a job so clearly he's the better dance crew so then they go out to dancing, and of course they see this villain guy. Do you know his name? Steven Stevo Jones as Jasper. Yeah, so Jasper, which is, I don't know, kind of a funny name for the villain. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of normal. <laughs> like, usually these guys have like crazy names like Vlad with two Vs, or with two Ds, or Hair or Monster. <laughs> so Jasper seems a little like normal <laughs> too normal and sean of course is our lead this movie as well as the last one i find him very boring and he kind of just takes up space but he <laughs> then is at the club with all of his crew and he says okay now we have to do a big choreographed dance and nobody wants to they're just like tired and just want to uh, relax yeah and they get served because the villains are always better yeah they're just better dancers than a lot they of they are and you'd think that like they would cast people as the like heroes of the movie would be the better dance crew just but like they go with handsome over dance quality true they've done it in all yeah. the movies and of course they're going to do it again good point and the guys like sean is a good dancer yeah but relative to these other dancers who are just straight up dancers not just pretty yeah. faces the other people tend to be better so then the best friend after they lose the dance, uh, this best friend character I really disliked in the last one. Yes. I hate him less in this, but I still don't like him. He's like too hurt for what actually happens in the yeah. movie. So they get outdanced and he said, I'm never going to let you embarrass me like that again. Yeah. And he's near tears. Yeah. And then the this man cries in this movie so many times or almost cries because he uh, yeah, he can't take any form of rejection. No. And then the very next day, the mob who we saw in the last movie who now got that Nike contract, but apparently it's just one spot it's just one commercial. Yeah. And now they're all living in L.A., but they're all out of work yeah the very next day they all move out and say like okay yeah we're all going home yeah, but they leaving. don't tell sean until they're packed and walking out the door yeah so then we get into the real plot of this movie and the plot of this movie is based on a google ad because <laughs> he searches dance auditions in la and uh, the first thing that pops up isn't a dance audition in L.A. It is a dance contest in Vegas. In Las Vegas. So I guess it was an ad. That's why it's not actually what he was searching for. Yeah. It's, it's the very first thing. It has dance in the, in the description. <laughs> I guess so that's why it came up. He clicks on that and it was, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. But I don't have a crew. How could I get one? Because all of my friends moved back to Miami. Right. <laughs> And he calls in his good buddy, Moose. And Moose is all grown up, but it was cool to see him. Yeah, and we didn't recognize him at first because he didn't have a hat on. Yeah, and he's like a man now. And he really grew up in the two years between these movies. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot. It was kind of shocking. And I think Moose works for maybe a supervillain. Because when we get an exterior of the place he works at, it's clearly a supervillain's lair. It looks scary and later we're gonna see the interior which is a mad scientist lab yeah exactly <laughs> but he's an engineer which just means he stands around in a hard hat 
Yeah. I'm not quite sure what his job is, but I guess he's doing well for himself. So, I guess so. good for Moose. And if we haven't been clear, uh, we're big Moose fans, both of us. Oh, we love Moose. He is the uh, single shining light throughout all of these movies. <laughs> yeah. We love him. He's great. It was uh, very exciting to see Moose this early in the movie after last movie when he was really only in like the big final dance production. And we get one interaction here where Moose is talking to his boss because Sean wants to go on to do this big contest. And of course, Moose wants to join because he misses dancing and Mm -hmm. he's been living this engineer life. (laughs) And he has like a small interaction with his boss where he's just saying like, oh, yeah, my grandma's sick. I need to take care of her. So I might not be here all the time. And in that little bit. He's not doing much, and he is the most charismatic person that's on screen in this entire movie. Yeah. He's just better at any sort of delivery of lines than all of these other dancers. I liked the boss's reaction to Moose's whole story about, like, I'm sure you had a grandma who, like, baked you cookies, and he's like, yeah. she was a prison warden. <laughs> but I'm sure she had a soft side. No, she was, she a, was a prison, prison warden. warden. <laughs> The boss and Moose are very funny together. They did a good kind of back and forth. So now Moose is on board. We need more people for this crew. Let's go get Andy. Remember Andy from the streets? Yeah. So she's back and uh, they are just kind of dicks. Well, Moose isn't, but they come in and Sean just finds underwear on this commercial shoot, I guess. Or yeah. something. Maybe it's a fashion it's like a magazine wardrobe. or something rack of stuff and he just takes underwear off of it and puts them on his head because why not and he's not even like doing it as a joke he's just does it yeah it was a weird thing for like a grown-up to do and then sean and andy start arguing about nothing even though they're there trying to get andy to help sean is like you're probably garbage anyway and so then they have a dance off and uh they mess everything up And Andy gets fired. Yeah, they like kick all the stuff off the table. And there's all these giant balloons and they start popping those and... And there's like a model on a swing. And yeah, they they almost throw her off and then she's screaming saying like, get me off of here. Yeah, which is fair. That's, that's, I would be too if people were like using the swing I'm sitting on as like a dance prop. And the person in charge says like, you need to get your act together. And Andy's like, fine, fuck you, then I quit. Like someone has wronged her yeah when she's just very bad at her job yeah and she clearly messed everything up it wasn't like it was a mistake or an accident or like somebody else came in and did it she clearly like destroyed part of this shoot backdrop and uh then it was just like whatever bye And of course, because they're arguing like this, we know that they are going to fall in love at some point. Yes. And you're just waiting to see how it's going to happen. Um, They just tell you it did. That's how. Yeah. They don't actually fall in love in any way. No, there's no, like, because in past movies, there's been a little bit of, like, like, flirting or, like, banter or anything like that. But then this one, they're just like, um, let's forget about that. And they're just going to kiss at the end. Yeah. They just argued the whole time and then they kiss and now we know they're in love. Yeah. And then we get a voiceover, but this only happens once in the movie. So it's very strange. Yeah. They do this kind of Ocean's Eleven getting the crew together thing. Right. Like, oh, and now we're going to get Jenny Keto. She's the best at this. And like, oh, we got our classic Brooklyn B-boy. And that's, I think, Monster. Yeah. We get hair, hair's back, and then hair's barber, who never gets a name. Yeah. Who has better hair than hair? And, um, yeah, so then we get Vlad and the Santiago twins. Santiago tw- twins are fun. They are I fun. like them. They're, they're great. They're a good um, kind of pair. Um, and they're they're good dancers. And you know who's not invited? Uh, Camille Gage. Camilla Gage? Camille. Camille Gage. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Moose's, I don't know, wife? At least girlfriend. Yeah. They live together. They live together and they live in that engineer life. And she is a very talented dancer. You'd think she'd be invited, but nope. Nope. At least they address that later. Unlike the last movie where they didn't invite her to anything and they just never mention it. Yeah. Here it's at least a point of contention. She like doesn't exist (laughs) in the streets. She just never shows up. Oh, and then we get the last edition who is a kind of ballroom dance instructor, yeah. but is like a real creep. 
Like he rips off his clothes in front of all of his children students. And he just goes around like sniffing people and like playing with their hair and hitting on them real hard. Yeah, Marcos. No, nope. that his name? I thought his name was no. Chad for some reason. Vlad. No, Vlad is the robot. Oh, Vlad is the robot. I'm not sure. I can't find him on here. <laughs> and then we go to this dinner scene where they get to say the words goat balls over and over again because yeah. that's funny. Like, and they act like like the goat meatballs are made out of like garbage. Yeah, because everyone's like, oh my god, this is goat meat? I don't know if yeah. I should cry or throw up. Lots of people eat it. It's not that and crazy of a thing. Goat's a normal thing to eat. Especially, Especially in meatball form, you can't tell what it is. No, it's just ground meat balls. <laughs> but I think they made a very strange choice in making everyone all grossed out by it. Yeah, and this is at Moose's grandparents' home. Which country are they supposed to be from? I don't I don't know. They have some sort of like vaguely European At times they're Italian, at times they're Russian. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah. And Moose's last name is Alexander. I assume that Robert Alexander the Third is like grandson of that grandpa is Robert Alexander the First. This one? I think so. Oh, I didn't, I thought this was his mom's side, maybe. Oh. Because Alexander sounds very English. Right. And they're not English. It's a good point. <laughs> but they have this dinner, and of course, Andy and Sean are fighting because that's what they do. But then they wash the dishes together, and they fall in love? I think that's the moment they fall in love. And then they see Moose's grandparents dancing together. And are like, oh, that's so sweet. That's going to be us. And I think it's weird that Moose and Camille leave his friends at the house of his grandparents. But he does also work for them and live in their dance studio. So they're pretty close too. Oh, I guess, yeah, he's an employee. So that wouldn't be as weird. Yeah, he lives in a kind of the storage room at a dance studio. Which is a tiny little like broom cupboard. (laughs) Yeah, it's very Harry Potter-esque. Yes. And now, because there's been so much practicing, nah, just kidding, there hasn't been much at all, <laughs> but they are ready to shoot their big video to get into, did we even mention, their, what's that thing called, Vortex? Vortex. So he clicked on that link and saw this woman who is kind of like the host of the Hunger Games. Yeah, she does look very Hunger Games. And she's like mixed with a bit of Michelle Pfeiffer and... Just game show host, yeah, I guess? Yeah, apparently she's a pop star. Really? Well, we see that music video with her in it. Oh, that's right. So I think she's like a Lady Gaga-ish pop star. So this character, on her first introduction, I was like, this person's doing a terrible job. Why won't they do more? But I take it back because as the movie progresses, she's having fun with it. She knows she's doing something ridiculous and she leans into it. And I think she delivers a very fun performance. Alexa Brava was probably one of my favorite characters in this movie because she like really does lean into it. And she just makes it ridiculous. And these movies need more of that because Sean is the opposite of uh, any sort of ridiculous charisma. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Andy. I agree. All that is ridiculous about them is how is what offends them. (laughs) But they're going to make their big video for it, and they decide their name is now The Lemon Tricks? Is that it? Elementrix. I think they're The Lemon Tricks. I think they're The Lemon Tricks too, but it's L-M-N-T-R-I-X. And I think you just say the L and the M to make it like element. I like mine better. (laughs) (laughs) Lemon Tricks. And they make this video, and it has roughly a $60,000 budget. It's huge. They've created these big, like, mad scientist props that shoot electricity. Tesla coils and Faraday cages. Those. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this this it's ridiculous that one moose would bring all of his friends into this, like, 
if this is all engineering equipment for whatever this evil lair is, that seems very dangerous. I think he's working for some sort of Dr. Frankenstein. I think so. And like Moose has to wear a hard hat in the control room. That's how you know it's intense. Out on the, like the factory floor, they're not wearing hard hats or anything. No, they're doing and full they're dance touching numbers. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like this is a very unsafe video. So their dance number is a mad scientist themed thing mm. and doesn't involve dancing all the time. No, it's a lot of like acting and movement. Yeah. So they get in later, of course, but it's on the basis of how much money they spent rather than their dancing ability, I think. Yeah. But that's how they end up winning too. Yeah, very true. They're like, oh, we just had the most expensive dance. And how do you know that they get in? They magic. <laughs> are told by a magic letter. Yeah. So they are like sent Potter. a little box. And when you open it up, magic comes out. <laughs> it's literally. And if you haven't seen it, you're like, what do you mean magic? Just like magic. <laughs> yeah, it's like light rays coming out of this box and Alexa Brava's voice and saying like, welcome, Elementrix, your journey to the Vortex starts now. Oh, I didn't even r realize that there was a voice. Yeah. I was so shocked by uh, how there was kind of like a small nuclear reaction going yeah. on in this it box. Was like, it was like the sun was inside the box. and it But was shooting... a cartoon sun. Yeah. It, it didn't just like light people golden up. Golden rays. Yeah, it shoots gold <laughs> magic out of it. <laughs> And just like how there was one scene with a voiceover that never happens again, there is one scene with cartoon magic never happens and again. And they don't just like they don't get into it. It never comes up. We just kind of are expected to just move on. Yeah. <laughs> and it tells them that they got in and now they're all going to go to Vegas. Yeah. And they're going to go in Jenny Keto's uh is it like an ice cream truck? Something like that. Um, Her family has a fish business? It's like a shrimp refrigerated truck or something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. So th they drive off in this like big clown car, basically. With 17 people in the front seat <laughs> all standing up, pressed against the front yeah. windshield. It's very unsafe. It's very. So they arrive in Vegas. And they're staying at Caesar's Palace? Yeah, and when they get out, there's like full camera crews and everything yeah. ready for them. Because this is apparently a really big deal. Yeah, there's like... But the only way he found out about it was just happening to come across it on Google. Like a Google ad, yeah. <laughs> and the host lady, what's her name again? Alexa Brava? Alexa Brava. She's there and she's interviewing the who's the villain character. And he Jasper. kind of like gives a fun speech and he knows that this is a TV show. So he's like playing it up more. Yeah. He's and like, I'm he's kind of on board. Streets. It's hard. <laughs> it's put a cage around my heart yeah. that I can only open with dance. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this sounds great. More characters should be like him. Yeah. We know that you're in a silly dance movie. Yeah. And he like gives this great backstory and everyone's like, oh. Like... And then he has to do another take because he's clearly just putting on. Yeah. He knows. Yeah, it's great. I like him more than the hero because then they interview Sean and Sean goes, we're here. So, uh, yeah. And even the host of this fictitious dance contest knows that he's boring and quickly moves on. Yeah, exactly. And you'd think that he'd have something like ready to say because clearly this is a televised event. Or at least just, just say something. Tell the story about, oh, yeah, we got this team together from all over the United States and we all just met three weeks ago and we've been practicing for this. That's a great story. There you go. Yeah. That's something. It's like underdogs. We came here in a shrimp truck. This guy's an engineer and he quit his mad scientist job just to teach us how to dance. Yeah. And he left his wife, who's a professional dancer. Yeah. Didn't even tell her about it. <laughs> also, his name is Moose. Why the Moose? dancing Moose. Why not Moose? Why not Moose? And then in the lobby, they run into the mob, Sean's old crew. Dun, dun, dun. And the best friend is a jerk like normal, but he kind of has a point because he's saying, like, you started a whole new crew and you didn't even tell us yeah. you wanted to go into this, but you didn't even call like your best friends for life. Yeah. Which is fair. On the other hand, they, uh, left, they, him. they left him, but also 
they started, they came to this contest without telling him. Exactly. They both did the exact same thing. Neither has any more reason to be upset than the other. But the best friend almost cries in the lobby and then like walks away. He's like, never mind. Yeah, he's a jerk. They're all jerks. They're all jerks. So they get their room keys and they are brought up to this like, what would probably be like a $40,000 a night room. At Multi-floor. Palace. Yeah. Giant penthouse thing. It Who's funding this? Like 15 people, it seems like. Well, they have more than 15, yeah. so yeah. Like, this thing is like an apartment complex. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like is the show funding this? Where is all the money coming from for Vortex? Because your prize is a three-year residency in Vegas. Yeah, at Caesars Palace. So you get all that. Uh, there's multiple teams, and even when you get eliminated, you still get to keep your giant suite at Caesar's Palace. Mm-hmm. Because later in the movie, we see that the mob is still there. And there's not many people in attendance. It's mostly just the dancers that are there. Yeah. And like each round people. is in a different place as well. So they have a lot of venues, too. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe they just built them a new stage every time. But the actual structures, because there's one time... Where there are like eight high balconies. Yeah. And it's circular. And then other times it's like an arena. Yeah. So I don't know. They have a lot of money though. Old timey boxing ring. Yeah. And then they see a cleaning lady and they're like, oh, wait a minute. That gives me an idea. And then suddenly they're in the basement of a stadium because that's where the laundry is done. Yeah. But there's no laundry machines. No. There's just bags of laundry. So then they rehearse for about two minutes. And uh, Andy wears the shirt, which is a big baggy shirt with a bra printed on the outside of the shirt. And the back is just ropes. (laughs) (laughs) That is actually a very good description of it. I don't think I could have described it like that. Why would you print a bra on the front of a white t-shirt? Yeah, she's wearing a sports bra underneath. Yeah. And then the back is just cut. So you just want people to know, like, this is what you could be seeing. But you're not. If I didn't have this shirt on. <laughs> Andy goes to great lengths to not wear a lot of clothing. Yeah. Like she's got her like leggings and she's got those rolled down and she's always wearing some sort of half top. Sometimes she's just wearing like a mesh tank top over a sports bra. She's got to show those abs. Like I just don't get it. Well, just like uh, the guys have to get their shirts off. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Exactly. Gotta show those abs. But there's only one point in the movie where her midriff isn't exposed, and it's when they go out on the town in Vegas, which feels like you would want to show off your midriff then. Maybe she just can't dance with a restricted stomach. Oh, maybe. Her she belly needs, button needs she to needs breathe. She needs the movement, yeah. the freeness. Oh, Sam is dancing now to show the movement. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's, it's quite impressive. So <laughs> I wish all of you out there could see it. And... They practice for about two minutes, and then there's a fight because he says, ah, oh, you're not getting it right. So everyone's like, oh, okay, fine, let's just leave then. Yeah. And they don't actually rehearse any of the things that they're going to do in the competition. Yeah. So, like, I want to know, because there's some of these dances are, like, 15 minutes long. Yeah, they're long 15 dances. to 25 minutes long. <laughs> and, it, like, as someone who's taught choreography, it takes a long time to get choreography as a group. And well, then to as someone it? who has watched five Step Up movies, <laughs> you can switch your choreography. Uh, uh, you need about 30 seconds notice before you go on. Right. And you don't have to actually practice it. You just have to say it. And then everyone gets it. Okay. That's what I've learned. Okay. And I'm a pretty, uh, I'm pretty much a pro because I've seen five Step Ups now. <laughs> Indie Step Up Professional. That's what they call me. Yep. My legs are so tired. So all that stepping up I do. Yeah, you're constantly stepping up. Every day. All day. And then we get a little uh, robot love story because Vlad, the robot of this yeah. crew, sees this robot lady from a different crew and uh, that's all you need. So now they're in love. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of funny. So again, I don't know dance. If there's anything that I've seen a lot of, though, is robot dancing. Yes. For whatever reason, uh, when I was a kid, I thought it was the coolest. I've seen a good bit of it. I don't think she's good. No. But whatever. And it's weird that like they're like mimes. Yeah, neither of them talk. They're like a mixture between mimes and robot dancers. Yeah. 
which I don't like. But you can look up on YouTube or whatever. There are some very good robot dancers out there. Hmm. I would say better than this. Okay. I'm going to take your word for that because I've never looked up robot dancing on YouTube. I like the robot. I think it's very impressive when people have that kind of body control. And who can, yeah, a well done robot. You're mm-hmm. right. I've seen. Vlad's that. good. Yeah. He's not great. No. But the lady was okay. And then they say, we're going to go out on the town because Sean's a dick and he's bringing everyone down. And they just go out and they um, just kind of harass people doing their jobs and make their jobs harder. Yeah. <laughs> there's like street performers and they take their stuff and do a dance with it. Yeah. There's like people <laughs> selling stuff and they're like, oh, here's, this is my hat now and your mustache is my mustache. It was, uh, I'd be really annoyed. They didn't steal them. They made free with them. <laughs> I would be really annoyed if I was just trying to like work my job on the strip, which is already probably pretty hard. And then they go and get harassed by some stupid dancers. And somehow they then find a abandoned carnival ride, but just one. Yeah. But it is operational. Yeah. And Sean and Andy have a moment because they dance on there and it's to every little step uh the bobby brown song so i enjoyed that when i was a kid for whatever reason i really liked that song (laughs) Uh, also there is some method man in this yeah uh judgment day which that album who wasn't waiting for it for like five years before it finally came out right the Mm -hmm. follow-up to to tical yeah oh yeah and then they're in some fancy bar and moose jumps up on the bar and starts dancing around yeah and then he starts dancing with some lady and this lady just attacks him and starts Kisses making out with Moose. And that's the who, moment. Who wouldn't? Exactly, yeah. And that's the moment. The Moose was loose. <laughs> uh, that's the moment that Camille and his grandparents walk up. Yeah. And see this lady all over the Moose. So Camille just like leaves. She goes back to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Just like leaves. And his grandparents stay. And then Moose just leaves. Yeah. And I know there's going to be this manufactured conflict in these movies because that's they can't generate any authentic conflict. But it's fine when it's that jerk friend and Sean because I don't care about them. Yeah. It's fine when it's Sean and Andy because I don't care about them. Yeah. But don't bring Moose into this. No. Moose is pure and good and is the part of the movie where I can just relax and enjoy. Yeah. But now you had to bring him into all this garbage, which I didn't like. Yeah, and so Camille storms off, and we see them again a little bit later. But then Sean is freaking out because Moose has left, and they're all, like, sad. Yeah, and they have to battle the mob next. Yes. And they just uh, do. They don't really need to change anything now no. that Moose is, is gone. So this like dance battle, like how would you rehearse for a dance battle? I don't really understand that kind of dance. Well, we have to ask our resident pro, Maria. <laughs> oh, Maria, who is the best dancer ever. Ever, ever. We'll ask her and uh, I'll report back on the podcast. Okay, sounds good. We'll ask the pro, Maria, how do you rehearse for a dance battle? Yeah, please tell us about your dance battles. Maybe it's like improv. Oh. Right? Because you can practice improv skills. Yeah. And you can like workshop things. So you know that if this situation comes up, you do this. I guess like you have little like five, eight count things ready to go. Yeah. Like you're like, okay, well, if they do this, then we'll throw in dance B. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or you just call it out. Maybe it's like you're a point guard and you're calling plays. True. Or like a sideline coach calling cheers. We figured it out, Maria. We figured it out. Thanks, Maria. <laughs> Continue dancing the best ever. Um, so then Eddie acts like this is a fight to the death. Because he's like, I can't believe you're here, man. I can't believe you do this to me. Yeah. Why? You're both professional dancers trying to win something. Yeah. If you were best friends growing up with a basketball player, now you're on separate teams. You'd be like, you either trash talk or you say good luck or something, but you know that there is a competition because you are in a competition. Yeah. Like, the, again, the conflict, just they're both doing the exact same thing. It's dumb. And in this dance, 
Sean grabs Andy and tries to throw her. Okay. And she's not ready for it, nor does she want to do it, they nor have they ever practiced it. it. They did it that one time. They didn't do the throw, though. No, but they, like, she, they, half rehearsed it. He said, let's try this. She says, no, I will get hurt if I do that. I can't do that. Yeah. So then during the performance, he grabs her and just tries to throw her. Don't try to throw someone no. who's not ready for it. Are That's you fucking like, crazy? For two people to do something like that, you have to have like the trust and the practice and the like background in this. And she clearly was in the right because like you don't just go throwing people. No. <laughs> and it's kind of disturbing because in the middle of this performance, he's grabbing her and she's going, no, 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 put me down. And it's, yeah, it's unsettling to see. And they still win though, despite that attempted throwing (laughs) which is like who just throws somebody in the air yeah and we see later what the move is and it's like being thrown 10 12 feet in the air oh yeah no that's like cheerleading and that's a very advanced move from the resident cheerleading expert (laughs) that's a very advanced move that like you really have to like have partner stunting foundation worked out with this person in order to actually get them into the air like that but the lemon tricks end up winning, and I don't know why this wasn't the final. Yeah. Because there's way more of issues between the mob and the lemon tricks than the lemon tricks and who are the other guys? The Grim, Grim Sleepers? Knights. Oh. Who's the Grim Sleeper? That's a serial killer. He's right? a serial killer. Okay, cool. Not him. <laughs> well, he might have this they might have been serial killers. I don't know. I mean, they make them out to be so bad, so yeah. maybe they are serial killers. Let's just say they're all probably serial yeah. killers. Yeah, oh yeah. They're just a group. But we don't have the hatred or the animosity towards the Grim Sleepers. They're just some guys. The only thing that we don't like them for is that they beat the Lemon Tricks in, or the mob in that bar dance. But the Grim Sleepers are just out for a night out. Yeah. They didn't like start it. No. Fucking Sean just has to, he just has to be a dick. Yeah. Yeah. He has to poke at them. Oh, and then we learn that this is why the Grim Sleepers are bad because it's rigged for them to win because right. uh, Jasper, <laughs> the <laughs> leader. Dating Alexa. Yeah. Then Sean, again, has like a strange reaction. He was like, there's no point in this anymore. My life is a lie. Yeah. And you could say like, well, you're being put up in this multi-million dollar place. Uh, you get to compete on live TV and you have seemingly millions of dollars at your disposal to make and build whatever you would like. Yeah. So that's a pretty good reason for it. And if you're going to be a professional dancer, you'd think dancing on a big televised event yeah. would be good for you. But exactly. no, he doesn't see any of that. He just goes on about like, everyone hates me. They're all against me. And yeah. it's like, yeah, they should hate you. Because you suck. You're a dick. Yeah, you suck. We don't like you. Go be sad by yourself. But instead, he uh, just changes his mind because I don't know why. He just changes. Something happens, I'm sure. He decided to change his mind. And then he gives a big speech. And then everyone's like, okay, we're in. And also Andy had left because he said, we're all leaving. Yeah. But then she comes back because why not? Yeah. She's still in Vegas, apparently. So then we get to see the final, uh, the Grim Sleepers dance. And it's just a bunch of disparate elements, which is my big criticism of of a lot of the final dances. Yeah. I feel like when they show little montages of bits they're doing and the rehearsal, you actually get to see more skills than in these big final dances because they put out so much. Yeah. That... It just looks like a mishmash of everything. It's like eight little dances all in one. And not a lot of them are cohesive. And there's one dancer who I, again, think is very good. And I think it might be the same dancer that I really liked from the last movie. Hmm. It's this woman. She has long braids. She's black. And she's usually like right in the middle. Either way, she was, again, the best one. Yeah, I agree. And I think that some of the dancers who don't have like speaking roles or like big roles are some of the best dancers. Yeah. Because they hired them to dance and not to act. Yeah, I wish they would just uh, concede that our leads aren't the best dancers and don't put them front and center always. Yeah. 
Let these other dancers dance. They're better at it. They are. And it's like actually really impressive some of the stuff that these people do. And then the main characters come in and they, of course, have to look like the coolest. And of course, they're great dancers. Oh, yeah. But relative to the people who are three feet away from you, that's what I'm going to compare you to. I'm an uneducated audience member. I can only see what's right there. Not like Maria. Not like Maria. No, she would break it down. I know exactly what's going on. But me... I just look and be like, oh, well, that person's doing it better than you. So Mm -hmm. they're better. I want to see more of them. But then Sean gives another big speech and everyone's like, okay, yeah, we're ready. They rehearsed this, I guess, for like 20 minutes the day of. Yeah. Because this is also the day after the last dance. Yeah. Which is insane because so much happens. Yeah. There's like 24 hours. And in that 24 hours, they have made... This dance, which involves um, tons of sand, and I mean like literal tons, yeah. like in weight, uh, falling from like 100 feet in the air. I don't yeah. know how it's up there. They have a crane and a dump truck or something? Something like that. And then we also get a reveal that half of the crew was buried in sand already. Yeah. So probably before the dance ever started, I don't know how long they were there. It and seems unsafe. They pop out of the sand, and then we have fire spinners oh and also remember the mob they're in this dance yeah too. they've Why not? joined forces and that other team the all-female team they're in this one too yeah sure why is how can everyone be in it yeah and jasper like, says like well they're cheating they have multiple crews fair which is yeah fair because <laughs> they like took all the best answers from both crews and like highlighted them also like i said in the last movie Nobody wants you to throw sand. Nobody ever wants sand thrown. Yeah, never throw sand at or people. They don't like kicking it. or like throwing it up in the air in handfuls. Like nobody wants that. Stop doing it. But this is kind of magic sand because it kind of disappears. Yeah. Because people were buried in it. And then they get out and they're fully clean. And I assume it's all over the stage too, which would yeah. make the stage very dangerous. Yes. So I assume... It just evaporates? Yeah, it's some of that evaporating sand. Yeah, because like, there's no way that they could go on and do all the things that they were doing with a bunch of sand on the floor. And the fire spinners, it, cool, but that's not what this is. No. So they weren't better dancers. They put on a better performance because, because they, they clearly had... spent $100,000 on sand and fire spinners. Fire batons. And having three crews. And, and I- Andy... Uh, clearly the actors couldn't figure out how to spin the thing so she's just kind of like dancing and like pumping it in the air oh. and it's only lit on one side so i wonder if she had a mishap maybe because she only learned fire spinning that morning yeah it was uh it was cool because the people behind her again the backup dancers were very good at fire spinning and she just kind of like waved the baton around them I couldn't even tell. Was it all people that we had never seen before? I think so. Or was it some of the dance crew actually doing it? I think it was some of the dance crew, but they they were just superior. They also just brought in some fire spinners probably. I think so. The, The whole finale was too big, and there's a point where you reach diminishing returns. I get how six dancers doing something in unison looks more impressive than two or three, But this was so big and so chaotic that I felt you couldn't notice the technique anymore. And you're just kind of trying to take in all the spectacle with all the lights and fire and sand and everything. There's like too many dancers. I don't know. It seemed very unfair for Elementrix, Lemon Tricks to get all this extra stuff. The Lemon Mob, because they have... And I can't remember the name of that third crew that's in there. No, me neither. But, like, it just seems unfair. And, yeah, Jasper should be upset because they clearly got an extra, like, million dollars to just, like, add a bunch of, like, crazy elements to their dance. And we didn't mention that also you win by America voting you in. You, like, text in. Yeah. What are those shows? American Idol? Like, American Idol. Idol That does it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so you think you can dance. So they bring that into it, but we learned earlier that it was rigged anyway. Yeah. Alexa? Is that her name? Alexa, yeah. Alexa. Two X's. <laughs> oh, I hope we start triggering people's Amazon things. Oh, yeah. Alexa, subscribe to 
I love this. You should too. And send them money. <laughs> Maybe that worked. Yeah. Um, Alexa gets a call and I guess it's the producer saying like, oh, this is so good. And it's also live on TV. Yeah. So like, I don't understand how they, because they clearly film it in like three days, but some of the ads say like every Thursday. So they're like recorded it all in like a few days and they're just stretching it out over a couple of weeks. Oh, Maybe it wasn't every day. I thought I remembered them saying tomorrow, yeah. we'll see, but maybe not. Either way, it's going out live and a producer calls Alexa and says like, oh, they have to win. The The lemon mob has to win. And she says, but the results aren't even in yet. And they're like, too bad. So it is rigged, but for the lemon mob now. Yeah. They don't the even wait to were see were like, no, votes. that was clearly the best. I don't know. I guess when you're a producer and you have all the money, you can decide who wins. Yeah. And then, of course, Andy and Sean have to kiss. Of course. Why? I don't know. Well, they, they do had the no trick. chemistry. They do the throwing in the air trick. Oh, right, right, right. So, Which they never practiced. No, they've never practiced it. They had, like, she had vehemently been like, no, we're not ready. Like, we haven't done it. And then she's like, let's do it. She's like, throw me in the air. Yeah. And she's wearing, like, a corset, too, which I feel like is not conducive to being... Especially her, because you know how much she loves a free midriff. Exactly. That must have been really hard on her. It must have. So they do it, and then he catches her, and then they make out. Yeah. And then everyone makes out. Yeah. Oh, we also forgot to mention that Moose went back and got Camille, and she was saying, like, well, I'm jealous not just because you're making out with some girl, but also, hey, I was a dancer. And Can, I want to uh, dance. dance. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, okay. Because um, in the finale, you can bring literally anyone in. Yeah. So yes, come on. And then she Please, dances Please, come dance it. with us. And then that one, I forget what her name is. She worked at a diner and she was very, very bad at her job because she would just like squirt ketchup all over everything. Right. Uh, she makes out with that creepy dance instructor, even though he like, she should have taken out a restraining order. On yeah, her. he was gross to yes. her. And like, she was in the right to being like please get away from me and then yeah like all of a sudden she's like no we're gonna make out now yeah and i think the robots make out robots make out they do some sort of robot kiss or something moose and camille kiss yeah and chris farley makes out with that penguin what or is that billy madison it might have been billy madison Madison. but yeah so it just doesn't make any sense and then there's confetti and they get their own show in las vegas I guess. Yeah. Who, though? The Lemon Tricks or the mob or that third group or... The Lemon Mob? Just everyone. The Lemon Mob ladies? So it's going to be about 85 people. Yeah. I mean, it would probably be good to have, like, understudies and backups and stuff. True. Because yeah. that's how, like, regular shows are run. Mm-hmm. But I uh, can't imagine that they would be able to, like, have all 85 people on stage. Yeah. Looking back on it, how did you like this one? It's kind of dumb. It's kind of dumb, but they're all they're all kind of dumb. It was fun, dumb though. Like the second half was fun. I disagree. I think the first half was more fun because it was like getting the crew together and look at all these different dance styles. Yeah. And the, the second half was more like, I'm angry at my best friend because I don't know. I'm angry at this guy because I don't know. Because I'm a jerk. Yeah. All the conflict stuff bogs down all of these movies. Make your conflicts dance related. Make your big final villain have conflict with your big hero. Yeah. Have your hero have some charisma or backstory to them. But what do I know? So the Grim Pirates. What were they called? Yeah, oh, the Grim Knights. Grim Pirates. The Grim Knights just like leave. They, they just like disappear. Why can't they be in the show too? Because everyone else is can. in the show. Yeah. People who lost much earlier in it, they should be in there too. I think the show that they should do is like a dance battle show. That's that's better. Yeah. That would be a better ending if they had the battle and they keep going back and forth and they don't know like who's going to win. And then their solution is like, you know what? You're both coming and you're battling every Sunday at five. Yeah. And like the audience can vote. Yeah. Like there there's your show done and they can keep coming up with new dances or like whatever but i i don't think one dance crew that is used to dance battling is going to do a very good show by themselves 
Well, luckily they gave it to three dance crews. So <laughs> exactly. I guess we're fine. Yeah, I think I like this one less than most because it's not that it was aggressively worse than the other ones. It's that it didn't have as many things where you're like, yeah, but that was cool. Yeah. Right? Even their big finale, it was almost too much. And I think they are just getting to the sense of like, we need to be bigger and better than the fi- the previous movies. Yeah. So we had to do more always. But you reach a point of saturation where it's too much. Yeah. Like too much lights, too much flash. like Too many different too dance many, styles going on at the same time. Too many different dancers. Too many things that aren't even dance. Yeah. It's like mime. Yeah. There's mime. There's people coming out from their sand graves wearing like night vision goggles or something. Flaming I don't know. Flaming batons. They're all sort of steampunk. They were at some points, yeah, but yeah. then it changes a lot. So, like, then I, there was like a burlesque type thing going on at yeah, some point. Like I don't get it. It's because it's the last much. one ended with that big shipping container thing, and that was very big. So they just feel like they have to go bigger than that. But I think you lose the dance, and I kind of want to see the dance because it's a dance movie. Yeah, I exactly. still think, I think it's in part three when there is a crew of like steampunk coal miners and they do like a dusty dance yeah it's still my favorite that was pretty cool because it was just like five guys that are very good dancers that's yeah. it i think i'm gonna have to remember which movies are which this might be my least favorite i don't know oh. i go three uh-huh. then maybe two uh-huh. and then honestly four five and one i just don't like so i'm not sure where they go Three is my favorite, though. Three is your That's favorite. one thing I'm pretty confident about. The college in. one? Yeah. With the bubbles? and Because the it was the silliest. It was fun. And it was the most moose. Yeah. Lots of moose. Quite silly. The really boring protagonist only takes over the movie halfway through. So yeah. you get a half of a movie of, like, moose and his college antics. Yeah. Which is great. Which is awesome. Yeah. And I think some of the just straight up dance numbers in that were the best. There's a good variety in that one. I agree. So our second sponsor of the episode is Park Power. In Alberta, you get to choose who to buy your internet, electricity, and natural gas from. If you choose Park Power, you are choosing a positive local business. Plus, Park Power shares its profits with local not-for-profits that are working to make a difference for their communities. Shopping local is very important to Park Power, and we love local here at the Alberta Podcast Network, so it's a great fit. Learn more at parkpower.ca. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. But will it be the end of our Step Up series? Only time will tell. We do still have Step Up China. So this one is kind of the end of this series. Kind of. Yeah. Because we get all the characters back and it's kind of an all-star movie. And I kind of like that about it. That was fun that we got to see the characters coming back. Yes. Wish they were better, but whatever. (laughs) The series did go over to China, and there is one called Step Up Year of the Dance. Yeah. Or sometimes just called Step Up China, which I'm very curious to, uh, to find out about. So maybe we might go there, but that'll be Sam's call. Because next week, we are each going to have a little spoiler free review with our things of the week. And I'll let Samantha know what we'll be watching for the big watch the week after that. Yeah, I'm excited. I I feel like it'll be something unique. Like all of your movies. Nope, I'm just going to do another step up. I'm going back to step up three. I just want to see it again. <laughs> We're going to watch it again and talk about it again? Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. I assume that Moose is the third. (laughs) Can you say that all in one sentence? Okay.